بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته Allah Almighty favored some days over others and among them the last 10 days of Ramadan and the first 10 days of the Hijjah if we have a quick comparison between the two find the the first one they are in Ramadan which is a blessed month and those are in the Hijjah which is a sacred month in Islam those are linked with fasting which is a pillar in Islam and these are linked with Hajj which is another pillar in Islam in those the beginning of Islam starts, the beginning of the religion started in Ramadan. And here the completion of religion was in the Hijjah. The beginning of the revelation of the Holy Quran started in Ramadan, in these ten. And in the, these ten here, the, some of the last verses in the Holy Quran were revealed. There we have uh, the uh, Laylat al-Qadr, better than a thousand months. And here we have the day of Arafah. The day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives and pardons most than in any other day throughout the year. As well as there is the day of An-Nahar, which is the greatest day in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Messenger وسلم, mentioned. Those are uh, marked by takbir, by the end of it, uh, which is usually for less than a day. And here, this is also marked by takbir, but this one goes for five days. Those are linked with Zakat al-Fitr and these are linked with the Udhiyah and so on. The comparison goes on and on. Now the concept is which one is better in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which one is more important? Actually, many people might think the days of Ramadan are more important. But the fact as the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa informed us, the coming 10 days are far better and more beloved and greater in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than any other days. Wow including the days of Ramadan. Nothing compares to them. Now, alhamdulillah, in Ramadan, many Muslims exert their efforts and they do their best in Ramadan. But many neglect these 10 days. So if your lost connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and getting closer and reciting more from the Holy Quran and doing more ibadah and qiyam and layl and charity, if it was only Ramadan, you need to reconnect again. These are even more important. Do not waste these opportunities. And now, what to do in them, you can do many. In short, you can do any kind of good deeds. You need to do as many different types of good deeds as possible and as much as you can. And avoid any kind of sins and wrongdoings as much as you can. This is what you need to do. That is in short. But there are some verses in the Holy Quran mentioning a beautiful phrase. Al-Baqiyat As-Salihat The remaining and the good And both of them are in the plural So the remaining things and the good things Both of them are description of one thing Same So what are these? This phrase is repeated in the Holy Quran twice And the only difference between both of them is the last word so in the first one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Baqiyat al-Salihat are better in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in rewards and better in the first one in hope. They are more hopeful. And in the other one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Baqiyat al-Salihat are better in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in rewards and in return in the end, in the consequences. Al-Baqiyat al-Salihat was explained by Ibn Abbas عنهما, as any good deed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He mentioned including dhikr and salah and psalm and charity and good deeds and reaching out for others and so on. However, this term is also used sometimes for a specific form of dhikr. One of the greatest forms of al-Baqiyat al-Salihat is a form of dhikr mentioned by the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa himself. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, al-baqiyat al-salihat are subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Those are al-baqiyat al-salihat. So what, what does al-baqiyat mean? Something that remains for you, right? And what does salih means? Means they are 
rewarding for you. You will give their rewards. They are suitable to receive reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beautiful. Now, how come the Messenger وسلم, is mentioning these few words as al-baqiyat, salihat? The remembrance of Allah Almighty, the care of Allah Almighty is the greatest ibadah. One of the easiest form of ibadah and one of the greatest and most rewarding. Many people sadly neglect that. So sometimes they tire themselves with so many different ibadah, which is great, alhamdulillah. But they also neglect very easy ibadah that might be even more rewarding. So you need to pay attention. For example, those are chosen words by Allah Almighty. And their rewards is doubled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allah Almighty chose from your speech, the speech of people, four words. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allah akbar. And then he explained their reward. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, anyone who says Subhanallah, Allah Almighty will reward him with 20 rewards. So it's not even 10 only. Usually the multiplication is 10 only. And it does not stop here. And remove from him 20 sins. It's better than any other things, which is usually multiplied only 10 times. So it's either this or that. But here these are combined for it. And anyone who says La ilaha illallah the same, and anyone who says Allahu Akbar the same, and anyone who says Alhamdulillah Allahu Akbar the same, and anyone who says La ilaha illallah is the same, and anyone who says Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen from himself means without any reason. So it's neither in the salah nor something good happened to him, nothing. Just he says it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Anyone who says it from himself, Allah Almighty will write for him 30 rewards or remove from him 30 sins. So for a few words, as you could see, as you can see, the, the rewards are great from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, those words, something is specific about them is that they remove the sins and wrongdoings. The Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that anyone who says Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wa La Ilaha Illallah, Wallahu Akbar, all his sins will be forgiven even if they were as many as the form of the seas. No matter how many or how much the sins are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive them for you. In another beautiful hadith, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained this. He was saying about the Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wa La Ilaha Illallah, Akbar after the salah. And uh, we, when we'll come to the salah, inshallah, we'll explain it so that we'll connect it to that, to explain the concept of the, the forgiveness. Another beautiful thing about them is that they protect you from hellfire. A person will come in, in the hereafter, and he will find around him something defending him from hellfire, coming from the front and protecting him, and from his behind, and from his right, and from his left. What are they? The Messenger وسلم, came one day to the people and he says, O oh people, protect yourselves. Protect yourselves from hellfire. Take a shield from hellfire. How do you take a shield from hellfire? Can you take a shield from hellfire? Fire? Probably the worldly fire you can do. But in the hereafter, how do you do that? It must be something else. Then the Messenger وسلم, explained, he says, Say, Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, Wa La Ilaha Illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Wa La Hawla, Wa La Quwwata Illa Billah. He added one more thing. Wa La Hawla, Wa La Quwwata Illa. Beautiful, it is linked with the concept of shield, because I have no power, no ability whatsoever, except with the will and power for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I cannot protect even myself except with this. So here the Messenger وسلم, says, Those, are the one that will come in front and those that will come from behind and those are the protection in the hereafter. Those are the protection. And those are the al-baqiyat as-salihat. So as you see, their benefits are multiplied in every direction. So that is why the Messenger وسلم, reminded us often and often to increase saying them. Increase. That is why the Messenger وسلم, Legalized it for us after every salah. What do you say after every salah? Subhanallah, after istighfar, etc. Then you say subhanallah 33 times. 
Alhamdulillah 33 times, and Allah Akbar 33 times, and then finish with La ilaha illallah. There are many other forms. For example, you can say Subhanallah 25 times, and you can say the rest also 25, 25, all of them. And you can, if you are in a hurry, you can say 10 times, 10 times, 10 times. So you can do that. That is when we'll explain the first hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, anyone who says after every salah, Subhanallah ten times, and Alhamdulillah ten times, and Allahu Akbar ten times. So here the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained that by calculation, by calculation, there will be this, you will repeat this for every salah. So he multiplied by calculation, those are 150. So as a number, how many you have said it? Why, why, why? 10, 10, 10, that is 30, right? Five. Multiplied five salah, yes, you are right. So because you have five salah every day, so after every prayer, so that will make it 150 by calculation. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there are 150 by calculation, but 1,500 as rewards from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and forgiveness of sins. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, and uh, uh, anyone who comes to, uh, so how, how many among you makes more than 1,500 sin every day? Do you make 1,500 sin? So if you concentrate and think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive you with this, this is something that is very beautiful, explained by the Messenger Sallallahu When you say it, you need to connect with the meanings. This is something very important. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also legalized it for us before sleeping. So when you come to sleep, one of the neglected sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to say SubhanAllah 33 times, and Alhamdulillah 33 times, and Allahu Akbar 34 times before sleeping. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made this advice to Fatima radiallahu and his daughter. She came to him asking for a servant because she was tired from house chore. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to her, shall I not guide you to something that is even better for you than a servant? And he told her to do this before sleeping. What is the, the link between them? She is asking for a servant. He is telling her to do these Ibadah. Many reasons. The first, what will remain for a person? He is opening our eyes to the reality of this world. This is a place when you, you are supposed to work hard and, and, and get tired. So it's nothing strange about that. This is not a place for relaxation. This is a place of exam, trials, tribulation. That is part of life, a reality. So here, if you will have a servant who will help you when you are in need, and that's it. The benefit of that servant will remain for how long? For as long as you are alive, or the servant alive, or the chore is required. And that's it. True? But these, the benefit of them and the reward remain forever. So which one is better? So that concept is something very beautiful that sometimes we neglect. Another thing is that the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthens the person, give you extra strength. Istighfar, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran, Allah might will increase you in strength and power above your strength and power. So here he is guiding us to how to seek help and support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and utilize that time of getting better. And probably there is a reason why this is done at the time of sleeping. Many people when they are about to sleep, they start complaining about the day. Thinking how difficult the day was and how tiresome and what I'm going to do tomorrow and so on. So they are not enjoying the sleep at all and not relaxed. So here when you take that out of your mind and concentrate on what is useful for you and utilizing that time, probably this is going to give you a better night's sleep and prepare you better for uh, the next day. The uh, final point uh, about this is in the hereafter. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained to us that the best speech after the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after the Holy Quran, are al baqiyat salihat, these words. So the best thing to say at any time when you are free, these words. One of their benefits is in the hereafter. 
In the hereafter, your Jannah, your place, your place in heaven, inshallah, in paradise, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the people of Jannah, inshallah. Your place there is plain, does not have anything in it. No vegetation, no trees, no buildings, no palaces, nothing. So, how do you prepare it? You prepare it now. You prepare it with your own good deeds. Among them is the plantation of trees. Now, if you want to plant a tree in this world and benefit from it and, and enjoy its shade and its fruits, how long does it take you? Depends on the tree. Could be three years or five years or ten years and there are even more, right? And sometimes for generations. So somebody should have prepared it for you before. In the hereafter, this is much easier. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said when a person says Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wa La Ilaha Illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Wa La Hawla, Wa La Quwata Illa Billah For each one of them, a tree will be planted for you in paradise. Wow. Subhanallah. So building a full field takes a few minutes only. So this is the idea that a person should concentrate on utilizing these. Now Alhamdulillah, we are coming to the best 10 days. The best ever. There are many good deeds that you can do in them. Hajj, obviously, if you can do Hajj, this is the best thing to do. And fasting, the nine days if possible. If you are lazy, at least Mondays and Thursdays. And the most important out of all of them is the day of Arafah. One single day. Fasting this day, the Messenger وسلم, said, it will expire the sins of two years. The first year, the previous one, and the coming year. So this is something that you should never miss. Also, Udhiyah, if you are able to perform Udhiyah. The day of An-Nahr, the greatest day in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever. The Messenger sallallahu said the best ibadah to do in that day to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is offering udhiyah. So if you are able to offer the udhiyah, this is the best ibadah to do. Increase the salah and charity and, and, and recitation of the Holy Quran and Qiyam al-Layl, etc. All of the good deeds. Because the Messenger وسلم, did not specify any good deed. He said there are no days where good deeds are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than in these 10 days. So any good deed. But do not neglect al-baqiyat salihat. The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam highlighted this form of ibadah specifically. And Allah Almighty mentioned them in the Holy Quran as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and so that they may remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in known days, these 10 days. The idea is to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dhikr and remembrance. Something that is very specific as well. That is why the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, after mentioning these are the best days, he said, so increase in them. Increase what? He said, increase, saying, takbir, that is Allahu Akbar, and tahmeed, that is alhamdulillah, and tasbih, that is subhanallah, of course, as well as tahleel, la ilaha illallah. So increasing that in them. And especially the takbir at the stated time. Takbir starts from the beginning of them, but this can be done at any time. One of the neglected sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to be practiced by Muslims early on. During the, the beginning of the Hijjah, until the end of Ayyam Tashriq, so about 15 days altogether. From the beginning of it, they will start increasing takbir whenever they leave the house, whenever they mount their uh, ride, whenever they go to the market and so on, they will increase the takbir loudly. Everywhere. So wherever you go, you realize these are the world, the place, the, the days when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to be remembered in this way. One of the form of ibadah. Alhamdulillah, during the Hajj, many people do that. And among Muslims, many people do it within themselves and their families. But to avoid neglecting it all together, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam highlighted another important sunnah, which is saying takbir loudly, specifically after every salah, starting with the Fajr of Arafah until the last of the day of the Tashrif. So for those days, the five days, all of them, there will be takbir after every salah. One of the sunnah of the Messenger That will be the best ibadah to do after every salah. 
The best ibadah to do that are specific to time, all the time. So at that time, and in that situation, this will be the best ibadah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who remember him a lot. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to his divine truth, make us good for ourselves and everyone around us. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.